Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clerkship rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today, in this episode, I am going to discuss one more image-based question in vascular surgery. So our patient is a 42-year-old woman presented with a two-day history of a painful finger lesion. You can see this lesion. On examination, AdSense test is positive. These are the two images. This is a clinical picture and this is <coughs> an x-ray which, which includes the neck and the chest. So this neck area. So these are the following five questions. Question number one, what is the differential diagnosis in this case? Question number two, what investigations would you perform? In figure two, what investigations is performed and what are your findings? <coughs> Question number three, what is your initial management? Question number four, why does pressure from a cervical rib cause this condition? <coughs> Question number five, what complications can occur after surgery to relieve this compression? So I request my viewers to pause the video and try to answer all these five questions. After answering all these five questions, you can verify your answer with the correct answers I'm going to discuss in the subsequent slides. So question number one, what is the differential diagnosis? The correct answer is, it could be embolism, digital artery thrombosis or vasculitis. So Raynaud's phenomenon, because of the vasoconstriction, yeah, it can produce gangrene. TAO, because of digital artery thrombosis, can produce this kind of gangrenous lesion in the fingers. Thoracic outlet obstruction, because of the compression of the neurovascular bundle coming out of the thorax, this can produce both neurological as well as vascular symptoms that can produce this kind of gangrenous lesion in the fingers. Question number two, what investigations would you perform in figure two, what investigation is performed and what are the findings? The correct answer is, we can do <coughs> vasculitic thrombophilic hyperviscosity blood test. ECG will show the evidence of atrial fibrillation. Figure two is showing chest x-ray including the neck chest x-ray plus the thoracic inlet views for, especially for cervical rib. That is what you are seeing in this picture. So this, this is the clavicle. This is the clavicle. This is the first rib from thoracic vertebra 1, T1. And this is the C7 vertebra. From the C7 vertebra also, you are seeing some rib-like structure is going there and this is what is called cervical rib. Cervical rib, so that will produce compression to the neurovascular bundle which is coming out of the thorax and then going into the axilla and to the arm. So that is the pathology here in, that is why it is called thoracic outlet uh, syndrome. Echocardiogram, also we can do looking for the source of the embolism. We can also do 
duplex scan or angiography, that is the digital subtraction angiogra angiography can be done. Question number three, what is your initial management? The correct answer is, the initial management is just, we have to give analgesia because it is very painful and you have to give heparin also because <coughs> majority of the cases are because of thromboembolic phenomenon. So in order to dissolve the clot, we have to uh, give the apparent. Question number four, why does pressure from a cervical rib cause this condition? Okay, the correct answer is the chronic subclavian artery stenosis with post stenotic dilatation and aneurysm formation is the pathology. Thrombus in the aneurysm embolizes to the digits and that are the causes for this kind of uh, gangrenous lesion in the fingers. Question number five, what complication can occur after surgery to relieve this compression? The surgery of choice is we have to do what is called <coughs> extra osteal excision of the cervical rib. Peri should be done. That is the treatment. Why, uh, after doing this surgery, that is excision of the cervical rib, the following complications can occur. The patient can get brachial plexus injury, phrenic nerve injury, harness syndrome, pneumothorax, and hemothorax. So I didn't uh, uh, this uh, ask an another question. I, we have mentioned in the, the case scenario, AdSense test. So what is AdSense test? If you, you have to palpate the radial pulse. Initially, the radial pulse was palpable. Then you have to ask the patient to take deep breath and then turn the head towards the side of lesion. You have to ask the patient to take deep breath and turn the head away from that side of the lesion. This will compress the arteries going through through that uh, thoracic inlet. Now, if you, um, now, you may not be able to feel the radial artery. It will become either feeble or completely non-palpable. This is what is called a positive adsent test. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very helpful, kindly subscribe to this channel and share these videos in your social media. Kindly click the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest upload. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an another episode. Until then, bye-bye.